Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to look at today in both the events and science news categories. We'll be hitting a number of stories related to Earth's ongoing magnetic shift, but we are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours was actually relatively quiet. Northern coronal hole and the bright active regions behind it, but no eruptive activity and no major motions on the Earth-facing side. The solar wind is slightly variable, but only within quiet range. Plasma speed isn't topping 400 kilometers per second yet, and geomagnetic conditions remain calm despite the solar wind variation. Let's get another comparison look at where we've been and where we're going. Few active regions here in the early stages of cycle 25 at bottom right. We see what the sun looked like very quiet one year ago with no sunspots. After that, we'll see where it was in 2013 during a strong uptick in activity. Still a ways to go to get there. Up next is the hurricane. The system managed to dance offshore quite a bit, even appearing to jostle back eastward at one point before getting back on track. Gorgeous lightning returns laid in as well as you can see the rotation around the core at some points. East coast on alert as the system is heading in today. A couple above average rumbles in the West Pacific, strong blood echo in the Philippines, and the magnitude 6 range hit in Papua as well. Sticking with motion underground for a moment, but in the hypothetical sense, they are seeing what will happen if a major volcano eruption were to happen today, like a really major one. Basically, it's going to throw the world into a much colder state for the most part, which actually lasts for quite a while everywhere except Antarctica. After only two years, they go from utterly frigid back to very, very cold. Let's get an aesthetic piece here before we dive into geomagnetism-related articles. Flinders Ranges in Australia. So incredible looking, it almost doesn't look real. And now we're moving on to the major publications, where we start off with a model of how the ongoing geomagnetic shift of our planet is allowing in more charged particles, poses an increased risk to our technological way of life, and even directly threatens airline passengers flying in certain regions of the world. The authors specifically call out the continuing shift of magnetism on our planet as a concern for life and numerous aspects of life that we've made here on Earth. So when we find observations of tropical zone expansion over the last few decades, and we see they're blaming global warming, we must remember that the weakening magnetic field of Earth has been allowing in more solar energy, it hits the tropics most of all, and high solar activity tends to expand the Hadley cells and Walker circulation which is exactly where the noted expansion is taking place. Story out about changes in the Arctic, which they are calling unprecedented, which they are blaming on pollution, and which they say require massive restrictions to meet the Paris Climate Agreement goals. Well, first off, they used CMIP5, which in my mind means their professorship should be taken away for boobery and ineptitude. But also, there is no examination of the ozone effects at the Arctic, the fact that the northern polar cusp funnels the solar particle energy there, and that all of this will be amplified under the magnetic changes we're experiencing on Earth. We might recall this from the very same journal a few months ago that did not ignore those ozone aspects and showed that if you do so, it's going to ruin your analysis. Oops. From sunlight hitting the tropics, to particles hitting the polar zone, to electric induction now and potentially the most important aspect of the space weather interactions. Here, they are discovering that even a small change in the magnetic character of the solar wind can cause exponentially large inductions of field-aligned currents and other electrodynamics at Earth. Not only do these work the weather, directly bleed off heat into the atmosphere, help explain the induced seismicity we've recently seen from those electrodynamic changes, but most of all, they aren't talking about just CMEs or coronal holes. This is the phi angle, the BZ, those electromagnetic rather than kinetic properties that present most strongly at the sector boundaries, the heliospheric current sheet. Therefore, take everything your imagination just ran down about surging exponentially stronger currents through local fields and apply it to the sun hitting the galactic current sheet or galactic superwave. It's those currents that can both initiate major activity or glitch the solar wind output to cause accumulation in the corona and then release. We're one volcano away from an ice age. Our magnetic field is weakening fast. The sun is waking up for cycle 25 and the mechanisms of Earth effect on which we've focused for years are manifesting. The hypothesized effect of the galaxy on the sun scales down nicely to Earth, 
or nicely up therefrom. And we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.